Good evening, everyone. You are welcome to another time in the presence of the Lord, the Faith Clinic. You are all welcome. Shall we rise as we open today's um, meeting? In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we have come before your presence. Oh Lord, help us. We have come, Lord, to seek your face. We have come seeking the corporate anointing this evening. Father Lord, we have come because we cannot do this on our own. We are seeking your help. That's why we are here tonight. Father, help us. Father, be with us, for we know you are with us. Lord, every heart that is troubled tonight, bring peace. Everyone that is ailing, heal. Every eyes that are spiritually blind, open. Father, help your children. We need you. We seek you. We have come to be with you. Hear us, O oh God. Let our cries be unto you. Open our minds to hear and receive from you. Help us, O oh God, to drop all the burdens at your feet tonight. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You are all welcome in Jesus' name. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen, hallowed be thy name, our Father, our Father who art in heaven, amen, hallowed be thy name, our Oh, 
sike ni dimma o chineke idimba isi yin can do o chineke idimba desia o chineke ibunga na bandi sindu muwe You 
you be God, you no be man. Jehovah Jireh, you be God, you be God, oh, you be God, you no be man, oh. Jehovah Nisi, you be God, you be God, oh, you be God, you no be man, oh. Man can tell lies, man can disappoint. Man can go back on his words, but Lord, you are God, you no be man. You be God, you no be man, oh. They have predicted that coronavirus will ravage this nation, but you have shown them that you are God, you are not man. You be God, you no be man, oh. Jehovah Jireh, you be God, our sustainer, you be God, oh. You be God, you no be man, oh. Jehovah Jireh, you be God, our keeper, you be God, oh. You be God, you no be man, oh. Our beginning and the end, you be God, Alpha, you be God, Omega, you be God, you no be man, oh. Father Lord, you are God, you are not man. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Today, we, we have come to, our topic today is in the hollow of his hands. In the hollow of his hands. There is a song that goes like this. In the hollow, in the hollow of his hands, of his hands, I am saved. For whatever may be ties me in the hollow of his hands, in the hollow of his hands, of his hands, in the hollow, in the hollow of his hands, of his hands. I am safe for whatever may be ties me in the hollow of his hands. In the hollow of his hands, let it be our song in this season and in this time. Why do I say so? If you open the pages of the newspaper, the pandemic is one side. Killing by bandits, Boko Haram, Fulani Shepherds is on one side. Devaluation of the Naira is on one side of the page. In the middle of everything, increase in electricity tariff. Yet, we don't even have 24 hours power yet. The federal government has signed electricity uh, tariff increase. And in another portion of that front page, you will find increase in the fuel pump of petroleum. Some places are selling it at 165, some 159, some 161, 160, as the case may be. In all this, people are bewildered. People are overwhelmed. House rent is going through the roof. Schools are about to reopen. And so many parents have already lost their jobs due to the pandemic. People are asking how do they feed? How will they pay this increment, increase in petroleum, uh, in fuel? 
I took a bus this morning and um, I find out that the bus ride that should be 50 naira is about 100 to 150 and the bus that is supposed to be 100 naira I paid 250 naira this morning and I asked myself how will people go through this when so many people have lost their jobs when so many people are already receiving reduced pay I know husbands and wives who their company have used the word go on is it follow or follow? I don't even know which, what's the pronunciation. But they have gone home. They have not been sacked. But they are telling them there is no money to pay them. A friend called me and said for three months then, I don't know how many months now, five months now, they have not received any salary. And he is a father. He is a husband. He is a breadwinner. How do you expect this man to meet his needs? Pay school fees, feed his family, pay the increments that have come about in the nation. So many of us are disappointed. So many people are crying that we voted for change. This is not the change we want. A lot of us are hurting. People are weeping. People are crying. Children are hungry. Fathers and mothers, they do not know what to do. I have come with a message of hope. Yes, people have said, uh, when people are going through this thing, you come and tell them, take heart. Uh, it shall be well. No, it is not that kind of statement that I have come this night to tell you. I have not come to give you so many scriptures. We have the Bible with us. Let us read. But I have come to tell you how we can apply faith practically, in, especially in this season and in this time. It is important to know how to apply faith. God is generous. Our God is good all the time. He even told us that if we have faith as tiny as the mustard seed, you know, he's not saying we should have faith as big as this building. He's not saying we should have faith as big as a ship upon, on the ocean or even as big as our car. He said, as tiny as the mustard seed. You will speak to this mountain and it will go where you said it should. Let me bring it down to the layman. If we have faith, small faith, and we are able to hold on to God, even with that small faith, in God's generosity, in God's goodness, he will bring to pass that which we desire. But we need to hold on to God. That tiny faith is all he's asking us of. See, I want to tell you that Christianity is practical. It's not just theoretical. Christianity is practical living. It's not just in the songs we sing or in the, you know, I don't know. But Christianity should be in the life we live every day. We should put into practice the word of God. And in this time, how can we practice Christianity? We need somebody. And Jesus told us, let's go to the book of John. John chapter 16. The person that can help us 
in this time, the way we can practicalize our Christianity in this season. John chapter 16, verse 7. I read, but I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. He says, if I do not go away, the counselor will not come. But I will go away and I will send you the counselor. He says in verse 12, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All, he didn't say some, little. He said all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Spirit we take of what belongs to Jesus and give it to us. He will take of what belongs to God, He will give it to us. How? Through the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, Cause Jesus, everlasting Father, Counselor, Prince of Peace, God with us, Emmanuel. And here we see the Holy Spirit. He's sending the Holy Spirit to be with us. So we are not alone in this time and in this season. How do we make this possible? We need to be aware. Every one of us that have given our life to Jesus Christ, every one of us that have received Jesus into our lives, we should know we are not alone. The Bible says he abides with us. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. You, 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 you. And I, we are not alone. Don't see yourself that you will go through this period alone. You need to. The Bible says, tiny faith. God in his generosity says, tiniest, tiny, tiny. Like we say in pidgin English, tiny, 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 tiny faith. If you have that faith tonight and you bring and you listen and know fully well that the Holy Spirit is with you forever. He says he will be with you and will be in you. You need to know that you have a friend. The Bible says Oh, what needless pains we bear. Oh, that song says, we bear needless pains, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Let us think on this. 
the spirit of God, the omnipotent, the omnipresent, immortal, invisible, everlasting Father, creator of heaven and earth, the living water, the living bread, the tree of life, the double-breasted one is with you, is in you, and will be with you forever. Why are we overwhelmed? Why do we despair? Some of us here tonight are here because we have lost our jobs. And the landlord is knocking on our doors. And the children are crying in our ears. Our hearts are fainting. Some of us women, we have lost our husbands. We have children we are look, that, that are looking up to us. And we don't know how to feed them. Some women, some of us here, the man had provided everything. We have taken care of the home front. And now he's no more. You don't even know where to start. The children are asking for this. They are asking for that. And people are telling you, do this business now. Do this. You are overwhelmed. You don't know where to start. You are a man that left your village some years ago. And by now, you have felt you would have made it in Lagos. When you left your village, you had looked at it. I go hustle. I go hustle. I go do. I shall not walk. I go walk. Haba. I go walk. But you have been walking. You have been hustling. Until date, you find you can't even pay your house rent. You can't even feed yourself. There is no job. You are in despair. I know some. They have gone to spoken to a lady. And the lady is not looking at their side. The lady is saying, look, 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 look. I have too many problems from my father's house. I don't go see problems. Come carry and join my own. No. This is my head. You know they reject bad thing. You know they reject good thing. They reject bad thing. And you look at yourself. You are asking yourself, Hey, where has my story become like this? To the extent that somebody is telling me, God forbid. You are a lady. You are not married. You don't have a job. You don't have children. You don't even have accommodation. You are looking up. You look down. You look sideways. Where do I begin? You have been in a relationship. And all of a sudden, the relationship is broken. <coughs> you are asking yourself, where do I begin? Some of us have been stagnated in a level in our offices. And we have been in one position for over five years. They are bringing people from outside and placing over us. We look up. It looks as if God is too far. I don't know what your problems are. The myriads of problems. No matter how big it looks in your eyes. No matter how extended it seems. No matter how overwhelming it looks. No matter the weight, imaginable weight, it seems to have. What I want to tell you tonight, no matter what it is, our God is able. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, Ecclesiastes is after the book of Proverbs. Sometimes I ask myself, did somebody remove it from my Bible? Or it's not there. It's not removed. 
Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I will read verse 11. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happen to them all. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. You may have said, some of us have several degrees and things seem, doesn't seem to be going the way we think it should go. That's why tonight I want to give you, show you who can help you. The Holy Spirit. He is in you. He is in me. And Jesus told us, and we know that God does not lie. He will be with us forever. I want to show you again. He says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For in the grave where you are going, there is neither working nor planning nor knowledge nor wisdom. The Bible says we should do whatever we want, we can. But we have seen that what we are doing, it doesn't seem to be working. We need to turn to Jesus Christ. We need to turn to the Holy Spirit. Jesus says, I go and I leave you with the Comforter. Let's look at the book of Romans chapter 8. The Comforter. We cannot do without the Comforter in this season. We need to turn to him. We need to cry to the Holy Spirit. We need to open our mouths and tell him, tell the Holy Spirit where it's hurting us. He is not man that he lies. He will not say what he will not do. He will do what he says. And he will, whatever he says he will do, he will do. Let me not bite tongue this evening. He says, the Bible says in the book of John for uh, Romans 8, 26, I read, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. Brethren, we cannot do without the Spirit of God. We cannot do without turning to the Holy Spirit tonight. I implore you, it is expedient that you turn, you and I turn to the Holy Spirit. We turn to Him like some of us, we are looking for who to run to. I am begging you tonight. Don't run to anybody. Run to the Holy Spirit. You want to share that thing that grips you. And you, you, you don't want to share it with Lagbaja because you feel that Lagbaja will tell your story to everybody. Share it to the Holy Spirit. Your secret will remain secret with Him. Who can help you? You are looking for a job in NMPC. You do not have a Godfather in Aso Rock. But you have God who is greater than every God. You know, you may think, ah, in Nigeria today, I beg you. You know they happen, but I'm imploring you tonight. Try the Spirit of God. Try the Holy Spirit. Try the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit as your partner. You need him. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit our counselor. The, Ho the Bible calls the Holy Spirit our confi confidence. Confide in him tonight. 
Share your griefs. Share your sorrows. Share your joys and your happiness with him. There is no valley that is too deep for our God. And there are no mountains too high for him that he cannot reach. I am calling on you tonight. Don't carry your burdens alone. Come to Jesus Christ. Come to him tonight. Open your mouth and let the Holy Spirit know what is grieving you. And I promise you, according to his word, you will not leave this place the same. Some of us we may ask, how do we partner with the Holy Spirit? How do we, you know, he's our counselor. How can I make him my counselor? How can I talk to him? Just, I want to tell you how I talk to him. You know, sometimes some of us find it difficult to kneel down and pray. Some of us find it difficult to make out time to pray. If you can't make out time. You see, I am driving and I, I tell God, when these things well up in my heart, I say, God, Holy Spirit, I am in your hands. As simple as that. I say, Holy Spirit, I am in your hands. I say, Lord, help me. As I go today, go before me. Open the road for me to pass. Remove traffic. This traffic that I'm seeing before me, make it move. I don't know how you will do it, but I know you can do it, Lord. I have people that sometimes some of my friends, our relationship is not on the best um, way it should. I go to God because I know one of the things a lot of us don't want to listen to. Before God will change somebody, he starts with you. If you have a relationship that is not going the way it ought to, God will start with you. He will start changing you. That's why we need to talk to him. He starts changing you. Have you not heard of this? God will say, talk to Lagbaja. And you say, ah, why should I be the one that will talk to him first? God will say, talk to him. And say, ah, he might start feeling that it's too much. The Bible says, pride goes before fall. You will hear the Holy Spirit telling you, talk to him. And then when you say, ah, uh, bros, good evening, no. Ah, he will greet you again. And you find out that he greets. Even he will be saying, hey, thank God, though. I've been trying to make up with this sister. And then you feel, after talking to him, greeting him, asking him how he's doing, and moving on, you find out that a weight is lifted up to you. A lot of the problems we are going through are self-inflicted because we will not open our mouth to talk to the Holy Spirit and listen to him to direct us to the way we should go. The Bible says, counselor. What do you do with, when you go before a counselor, you tell the counselor, then you listen to the counselor. The Bible calls him Waymaker. He is the strengthener. Go and use the Amplified to check that John 16, 17. Advocates. He's the one that pleads your case, my case. You say you don't have anybody and you are looking for promotion and you need somebody to hit the table on your behalf. He is the advocate. He will hit the table and say, let my daughter move forward. Let my son be promoted. I don't just want one promotion. I want double promotion. He is the one that will hit the hand on the table. But if you don't open your mouth to let him know, you don't need a wolio. Hmm. You know what is raining in Nigeria today? Everywhere people have wolis. 
pastors that are praying for them, that are in their payroll. They run to tell this pastor their problem, then they go to sit down. And you expect the man to fast on your behalf while you are sleeping. It doesn't work like that, though. Ah, they will say, that man of God, he has been praying for my family. You give him money. You buy him food. He's not the one that answers prayer. He's God that answers prayer. Why don't you go to God? You don't need any big deal. It's not like you want to go and see uh, 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 Buhari. That you start looking for who you know. You start filling forms. Start looking for one PA, SA, this one, uh, Edo Camp, ADC. With God, all you need to do is bowing your heart. Looking inside to know that He is with you. The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy 33 27. Deuteronomy 33 27 says, is a very popular and one of my favorite. One of my favorite, 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 favorite. In the midst of the storms, in all that is going around me, I just tell myself, according to the word of God, it says, the eternal God is my refuge, and underneath, underneath me are the everlasting arms. His everlasting arms. He will drive out my enemies before me, saying, destroy all my enemies. That's what he will tell the angels. He says, I will live in safety. I will be secure. My springs shall be secure. And my land, the grace of my land and my wine, where the heavens drop dew, I will be blessed. I always remember, on, the eternal God is my refuge, and underneath are his everlasting arms. He will drive out my enemies before me. I always remember that scripture. Underneath, the eternal God is my refuge. We are going through a lot. Petrol price. I tell God, the money in my hand will not be determined by the policies of countries. The value of the money in my hand will not be determined by the very graces of the government policies regulatory bodies, they will not be the determinant of my money. We see how regulations are destroying economies. Coronavirus have put the world flat on its face. Countries like Nigeria devaluing their currency. Is it Government that will determine your economy, or will you allow God to determine your economy? The Bible says, I am in this world, but I'm not of this world. I want to let you know that if you truly believe that the Spirit of God abides in you and you talk to Him. The simplest way to talk to God is what I have told you. Sit down. Let him hear all that is disturbing you. And then listen for his advice. If you talk to God, empty and listen, you will always hear what he says. You can begin the practice. Initially, you may be asking yourself, Am I sure it's God talking? But as you practice it, you will begin to know the voice of God. It's just like the person that goes to do exercise. 
You see, like me now, that is horrible. If I start doing exercise now, and I start swimming, when they release us to go swimming in the uh, um, you know, public gyms where we go for swimming, I will turn up. I will lose my weight. I will lose weight, you know? That is how continuous exercise. I will come, I will move from Morobo to Lepa. Maybe not Lepa Shandy like that, but you know, I would have lost some weight. That is how when you practice, your muscles will become toned. You will start seeing it. And people will tell you, ah, you have lost some weight. This one, nobody will tell you, but you will know within you that you can decipher God's voice from the voice of all that is happening around you. That's why Jesus said, you will go when you want to pray. Go into your closet. The closet he's talking about is not just entering into a closet. But if you can go into a closet, very good. But what, what, what of if you're in the bus? What of if you're in the office? And so many things are happening around you. What of if you're in the market? And you need the Lord to open your eyes. Because if you go to the market, I find out that everything produced, you have number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and sometimes more than. You don't know which one is the original. And you want the Holy Spirit to direct you to the one that is original. You must be able to go into the closet in your heart. And that's what we are talking about. In the hollow of his hand. God Emmanuel, God with us, the counselor, our advocate, everlasting father. First John, first John. When I learned um, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts of the Apostle, Romans, Cori, Cori, Galatians. Okay. First John 2, 27. First John 2, 27. As for you, a lot of us that have received Jesus Christ into our lives, You have received Jesus Christ into your life. According to the scriptures in the book of John, it says you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. The truth we are talking about is the truth of the abiding spirit of God. It says, as for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you and you do not need anyone to teach you but as his anointing teaches you about all things and as that anointing is real not counterfeit just as it has taught you remain in him John 16 7 John 11 13 God our counselor John 14, 16, we abide, he abides with us. Ecclesiasticus 9, 11, and 10, the race is not to the swift. We need Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy 33, 27, Ever eternal God is our refuge. Underneath him, us are his everlasting arms. I don't know, have you, any one of you here who have not yet received the anointing from God, who have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? You need Jesus Christ. 
And you need the impartation of the Holy Spirit. You need the Spirit of God in you. Tonight is an opportunity. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 3, Behold, I knock on the door of every half. If you open unto me, I will come in. I will come in with my Father. Jesus is knocking at your half. Would you allow him to come in tonight? I pray you do. You can't do this alone. You can't go through this battle, this battle in this pilgrimage. You can't do it alone. No, you can't. And for us who have received the anointing, for the anointing breaks the yoke. It is the Spirit of God in you that breaks the yoke. It is the Spirit of God in you that makes the difference. What are you doing with the anointing? Tonight, I want you to bow your head. Stir up the Spirit of God that is in you. Stir up the anointing that is in you. If you are yet to receive Jesus Christ, tonight is an opportunity. As Jesus gently knocks at the door of your heart, open your heart unto him. He will come in and he will sup with you. He will come with the Father. And you have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in you. Father, tonight we have come. Fill our cup, Lord. We lift it, Lord. Come and quench this testing of our soul. Bread of heaven, fill us till we want no more. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. And make us whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Fill it, Lord, and make me whole. Lord, perhaps there are some that are going through, should I or should I not? Lord, help them to make up their minds tonight. As many hearts, hearts have come before you, Lord, help them to stir up your spirit that is within them and help them in this season. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, as many hearts as are open unto you, Lord, even beyond this meeting tonight, let them learn and let them practice faith talking to you as the next person beside them, talking to you like they talk to their wives, to their husband, to their partners, to their children, to their neighbor, to their colleagues. Help us to open our mouths to talk to you. And help us, oh God, to listen to your direction that we may find solution to our problems, that we may find a way in this maze, that we may find the light in this darkness, that we, might, that we may see the light at the end of the tunnel, that life will not overwhelm us, that we'll be able to lift off this burden and drop at your feet. Help us tonight, Lord. For you are in us, and you are within us. And you have never left us, and you abide with us forever. 
Lord, help us to remember that. And as we do, help us to practice that our faith, practice our faith, that we see solutions to our problem. I know that Christianity is practical. I know that we serve a living God, a God that is good and generous. We thank you, Father. We bless your name. Thank you for helping us tonight. Let your name and your name alone be glorified. To, we, to you we give all the glory forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.